Okay, guys, we are here once more. Thank you for joining us for our live stream service tonight. This is the experience. So we had been on a long break and we resumed last week. And do you know what? Our theme for this season is this too shall pass. This too shall pass. That even when things are difficult and on and on, the Lord promises us that he has good plans for us. And that's our theme for the season. And today we are starting to look at one difficult element of our life. How do you behave when you lose a job? Our topic today is in between jobs. So this job has ended. You are hoping for another one that is coming. You don't know when it is coming, but you're hoping for that one to come. And you're in between here. How do you behave? in between these two jobs and so that's what we'll be exploring tonight we have lots of things we have the music we have an interview lined up for you and then we have a sharing from the from god's word on this subject in between jobs handling job loss join us this evening as we congregate here at uh, the outback bazaar but also in the online space god bless you let's enjoy together thank you theme for the season is this too shall pass let's go together this too shall pass if you're watching us online are you going to say it together with me this too shall pass i have faith that you have said it with me so let's go one more time this too shall pass and that's what we'll be looking at um, breaking it down on various subjects that affect uh, young people. And uh, today, we have one of those. We have one of those, and this one does not just affect uh, young people, it affects um, really everyone. Um, and so, we will be talking about in between jobs. In between jobs. And um, the, the issue of... Uh, losing a job can be very difficult and today we are going to learn on this subject from scripture uh, but before we get into the details of that i would like to invite a guest that we are going to have a dialogue here with and uh, this guest is a friend so uh, let's put our hands together for cleopas cavita until he arrives until he arrives. Karibu, karibu sana, my brother. Uh, please do take a seat. And I'm going to request you to, to introduce yourself. Please do tell us who Kavita is or who Cleopas is. Because I know Kavita is someone else. It's still uh, my name. <laughs> oh, is it? All right, there you yes. go. Mm. So, praise God. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. And my name is Cleopas Kavita. Mwange, Mwange is my now mine. Kavita Nyakuomba. Uh, but um, I'm born again. I love the Lord as my personal savior. And um, I'm here with my family. I'm married to one very lovely wife, Mudoni. Mm. Ah, That's there awesome. she is. Yeah. And God has blessed us with three ki children, uh, Jaden, Wendo, and Wema. The Wema is with the Lord now, so we bless him for that. And yes, uh, I'm blessed to be here. Hopefully, you may introduce enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we have an interesting subject here of uh, being in between jobs. So the, the reason we chose this subject, uh, you see, being in between, it means there's something else this side, and there's another one on this side. So you have a job that, uh, that you are part of, or you are participating in, and then on this side, you have hope and faith that you will get another job. So this one has ended, so you are in between uh, the next job. So there is something that goes on in between here. Uh, and the question is, have you ever gone through job loss or witnessed someone going through job loss? And do you want to share that with us? Okay. So I think... Uh Personally, I can say I've experienced both. So, uh, yes. And um, it's, it's, it's usually an interesting journey. So, 
Do I give brief? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, go on, sir. go on. It's your turn. I think uh, mine happened uh, uh, a while ago, like a few a few months ago. I think it was um, 20, 2019, before 2020. So previously I was at a job. Uh, we were doing research, uh, but <clears throat> contract came to an end. Then the donor funding came also to an end. So that was the first experience I had. But here will come... It's the, the one that you anticipate that it's coming. So that one did not uh, hold me by surprise. So that one we braved through, but found another job also the, that uh, deals mostly with what I also love doing uh, about financial analysis, uh, analyzing the financial market. But uh, also that went off. So I think uh, towards December, January, February, they were not paying salaries. So we sat down with my wife and asked, uh, is there a need of going here? And we can see, you know. So we said, you watch to Jifute before. So I think that was the first one. Then, uh, so th now we are in, uh, we are in 2020, 2020, February. Yeah. Yes. So my wife also uh, comes into a very interesting scenario as well. So where she worked, uh, they used to do interior design, but uh, they were importing their things from Italy. So towards that time, Corona Kanza Kukuja. So Italy, after I may break you down, so the company said, Nyaje, I think this is the right time to release these people. So, so my wife, a couple of notice. For her, it was the official one, the notice, you are no longer, your services will no longer be uh, required in this place moving forward. And yes, so to our really home with some three little children, and with God, and we are looking at you saying, and God is always there. And Corona is here, so we said, okay, yeah. So I think I have experienced both with my wife, so yes. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that, that uh, must have been a difficult one, right? Um, difficult is an understatement. <laughs> oh, it's an understatement. So how did you handle it? That's my next so, How did you handle it? So I think uh, the first thing that comes to mind is fear. Yeah. And uncertainty, because you're not sure. Because now you, you try applying jobs, and most of the people are Nambiwa and Deni Nyumbani. Yeah. And you're like, Manze, we have to. I think that time, my, our last one was relatively small. So, Nangalia, you need diapers, like, uh, yes. And you're like, God, uh, this, is, this is not happening, you know. Yeah, so it was not easy. As I can say, the first thing that comes to mind is you, you are uncertain of tomorrow. You know, one thing that the, the job gives you, kuna some bit of certainty. Because, you know, uh, regardless of it, at the end of the month, maybe I'll bring in some, some percentage, my wife some percentage. So, you're like, uh, in, at the subconscious, you're sure kuna some certainty. Yes. Now you're sure at the end month, you know how to talk to your landlord <laughs> and all like, like yes. So yes, I think there, is, there was a lot of fear at that time. Yeah, yeah. So yes. Fear, uncertainty. Yes, and, and, and a lot of thoughts. Because uh, I think at that time you try to think, what can I do next? Yeah. What can you do? And I think the most frustrating thing also is when you try out something and then it doesn't work. So you doesn't put, work. Yes, at yeah. that time. Because also you're trying to th make things work. So you'll try to do things. So uh, when they don't mature or they don't give results, then also it becomes frustrating. Mm. Yes. Mm. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And, and you see, when during crisis, the things that usually you think they don't take long, now they look like they actually take long to come. Uh, and I've, I've, seen, I've seen a bit of that. So you are farming. There is a um, shortage of food. And then if it is Skuma Wiki that takes a period of time, now you feel like this thing is taking eternity. so long. It's taking eternity. Yes. And I'm sure that that must have been something that, uh, that was happening, that uh, the month is coming too quickly, the end of the month is coming too quickly, <laughs> and the money is little. I think the, the, the end of the month comes too quickly, but the things you expect to mature come too slowly. <laughs> come too slowly. <laughs> so they interchange. Yeah. Mm. So if, you, uh, if someone who is listening to, to us this evening would want to know, what lessons did you, did you pick through the whole journey and, uh, and how did you eventually come out of it? Okay. Yeah. 
So I, I have a few. I have, I have a list of a few things I can share about that. Yeah. But one thing that I, I learned uh, in that season and something that lo I'm also learning and trying to implement now is one thing that uh, the Bible is key on. It's about management. And God tells um, uh, uh, Adam, uh, replenish and manage any till and replenish this earth. Mm. So I think the mandate for man is mostly to whatever God has given you, handle it in the best possible manner. I think uh, one of the things, uh, a preaching I had a while ago, and he was saying, the pastor was saying, at times we condemn the person that had that one coin, that he did, and when the master came back, he gave him back that one coin. Mm. And at times we are like, you are a very unfaithful servant. But if we look at ourselves, can we even return the 1% that God gives us, you know? Wow. At times he gives wow. us so much, but we cannot even return. When we come to see God, we are in debt. We are like negative. Mm -hmm. So that came me thinking that even that 1%, uh, God was not happy with him. But when we are put in his shoes, we are mostly worse off. Because when, mm -hmm. we, when we look at how we manage the resources we have, Mm. So I think one of the lessons I picked up is um, let's manage what we have in the times of plenty, Vizuri. Wow. And wow. when you look at uh, the Bible throughout uh, from Joseph, uh, the, uh, God tells uh, Pharaoh, in the seven years, there will be plenty. Yes. And I think that's the cycle of life because I do uh, analysis. The markets always go up and down. And I think that the life, life is as such. There's the ups and the downs. And God tells us, in those seven years of plenty, make sure you put enough for the next seven years of scarcity. Yes. And I think uh, it's Ecclesiastes says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. So mm. there will be time where there is harvest, but there will be time where there is the seed is on the ground. You are not seeing nothing. So wow. when that seed is on the ground, your harvest for the last season should sustain you. Wow. So that's one thing wow. that I learned. Wow. Still working on it. Yes. <laughs> there are times we are beaten once, twice, thrice. <laughs> yeah. So it's, I think that's something that I really picked out. And, and even uh, as you go to your second point, once I was listening to, to Bishop Oscar, he was preaching about yes. finances. And one of the things he, he, he advises the people to do is to keep money that can cause you or allow you to live your normal life for six months if you are ever to lose a job. Yes. And I'm wondering, so I'm looking at the monthly budget and I'm saying multiply that by six and keep it somewhere as an emergency fund. So I think that has reinforced that uh, just Which listening to very interesting because I think I, 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 like three months ago you sent us a link on that. Oh, yeah. And I think I picked a few things. He says uh, we should live in 60% of our income. So I don't know, if I look at Richie, whatever you earn, 60% <laughs> is what is yours to use. 40% uh -huh. is for reserve. And he gives out a, a very good, if you'll allow me, he says 10% is for tithe. That one is, if you're believers and you believe God, that is a given. 10% is for tithe. Then the other 10% is for saving. And this is saving towards investments or saving towards a house or something you want. But you have to save towards that. Then the other 10% he encourages us to have an emergency fund. Mm -hmm. Whereby when anything comes, you have a fund that is ready to sort you within that time. Then the other 10% is for retirement. As much as we look young, retirement is as sure as the sun. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. So prudence is, let's save up for that. You don't want uh, to retire today and by the next uh, one month you're down. Because <laughs> we do not save up for our retirement. So I think that is also wisdom. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. There was a time I was um, interacting with some financial advisors. So they wanted me to apply for a, a retirement uh, plan. Yes. Endowment. I think they called it endowment funds. Um, they are connected. I don't understand those financial terms. But the point is, so they gave me a schedule that says if you are 20 years, then you need to contribute this much. If you are 30, if you are 40, if you, then it looked like mine is becoming, now my risk is higher. And I realize, you know, in as much as I think I am young, 
the, the figures there are, <laughs> are saying something else. Anyway, you are sharing the lessons that you've picked. Um, yes. So one, one critical one is management. What do we do with what God gives us? I think the other thing that comes to mind is put measures to relieve your mental strain. Wow. And what I mean by this is today, Umambiwa, you're no longer working for us. And maybe at that time, maybe you'll be given the, the salary for that month or maybe one extra month. So what I, we did personally with my wife uh, was you, you look at the things that are urgent for you. Because as much as I don't have a job, getting another job, you're not sure of when it will come. So I think uh, let's, one thing that uh, you need to sort is your mind. Uh, one thing, yes, if you can't pay your rent for the next few months, because trust you me, at the end of the month, you don't have a job and you don't have rent. So those are two combinations you don't want. So if you can push, uh, spread it uh, further so that you have a bit of mind to, your mind is a li little bit relaxed for you to, to think through of the next action. So the other thing is like, have uh, your supplies in check. Maybe do a shopping for a month or two. So you know this is the money we have. Let's shop for this month and next month. Hoping that uh, between that time, things will come through. Uh, yes. Then have a little money to, to up on the ule unas, you, you minimize because you need to apply for jobs, go meet this one, go look. So having that in, in mind before will give your mind uh, a safer room to work through. Because one thing that happens uh, when time starts flowing now and you don't have a job, then stress comes in. And when you have, you have stress, you cannot think. And most of the things that bring you stress is manze landlord and meka. Muna check yet, it's a, a very weird, uh, weird day of the month, 12th. Like, you know, you don't want that. So, you have to have your mind at set. So, if you can, talk to him, pay a bit two months, it will give you peace of mind. If you have children, stock for them. Uh, just make sure they have food. You don't want your child to If you have children, stock for them. Just make sure they have food. You don't want your child to say, Baba, it's, a, it's not a good question. So, yeah. I think, yeah. So, uh, put measures that can give your mind a good working space. Wow. Yes. Wow. Thank you. And one of those that I could add is, um, you see, there are payments that you make on, on a, monthly, a monthly basis, and those rent and on and on. But there are others that, uh, so for instance, you took a loan from a circle or somewhere, and, and the advice here that I had from someone, if you foresee that this job has actually gone, do not wait until the circle or the loan people send you a reminder. Go to them one month so you've known that that, has, that source has been cut. Go to them, sit down with them and just discuss and say, hey, this thing, the way this thing is looking, I need some time off. I need like three months or six months. Are you going to give me some time as I reorganize myself? Now that's different from you've waited until the end of the month and you knew that the job went and the reminder has come. It's text, it's email, it's WhatsApp, it's everything. So now it's just so, so much stress. Uh, and so I, I, I love that point, that look ahead and see that this thing is a potential stress uh, point and manage it early. Yes. Good. Your parting think, short? Uh, yes, I think I'll have two, then I'll pass short. I think the other thing is adjust. I think adjust, adjust, adjust. I think that period for us, uh, so we made February, March, April, May, June, July. By July, I was panting. Five months. <laughs> I think it was around uh, wow. four or five months. So hey, by that time, I saw you just have to... And I think uh, at times, especially for men, it's good to look at the realities and accept this is where I am and accept it. And I think uh, that is a, a good starting point. So that will help you even readjust more and adjust more. Because wow. what happened, I think it got to a place that I told my people and my wife, we discussed and we said, you know what? Machako Simbali, Macha Twende Kidogo to Kalime Dania and look at it. But it was just to relieve because if you're living there, you're paying a rent of X amount. So over two, three, four, five, six months, it's still accruing. Yes. So unless you have something to either it's eating into your savings or it's accruing debt, one of the wow. two. Wow. So you have to adjust. And if you adjust much earlier, then bouncing back will be much easier. So that's, that's something that I, I will really advise. If you can, uh, that's adjust. Brilliant. That's brilliant. Yes. I think apart from the housing, what are the other elements that, you know, a young person 
could consider adjusting in their expenditure? You know, yeah. I think adjusting is all around. Now, uh, it will matter with the person. There's somebody who goes maybe to KFC every, I'm a Kenchi, I'm a somewhere every Tuesday. And you look at it and you say, hey, that 2,500 of us, this amount of month is X amount. Let's cut down that. You get. Uh, you cut down on maybe even your diet. You cut down on come on a bangi kiatu every month uh, to our ladies. Uh, by after two, three, four months, you know. Mm. So cut down until you have enough resources to sustain you over a period of time. So I think adjusting is very key. So for me, we went to Machakos for a while. It was a good breather. I think another someone in Lipanda Skuma Nikona Ikimea to Kaikula to Kamaliza. So it can tell you Aikwa Skumbili. But through it you can see there's also seasons and times also. So I think my last one is also plan to invest. I think um, it's in it's in I think uh, Ecclesiastes eleven verse two. It says invest your diversify your risks into seven avenues yes eight avenues because you don't know when disaster will hit yeah. so in this sense it's not that god is predicting disaster but he's just telling you it's good to plan do not depend on your salary alone yeah. uh, if you can have a kiosk in a 200 a day that's good enough if you have something else diversify so when you're hit from one side you won't feel the impact because i'm sure most of us here if our primary source of income was taken away, it will take us two, three months to be flat. Yes. 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 And two, three months is even on the higher side on a normal uh, Nairobi person. So it is good to diversify your risk. But also, it's with caution. Because most of the time, the investment um, avenues that we have, you don't want to invest what you have, then you lose your job. You lose your investment and your job as well. So it's very key to know where you invest me, investing, uh, do your due research. I think kuna plot is ilikuwa zinauzwa Mombasa. Sijui nani walinunua hapa? Anyone? <laughs> yes, mnazijua. Ziliuzwa juzi uh, land is uh, going for 750 per week, I don't know. And at times it's good to look at the deal as well so that you don't put your fingers and get burnt and you don't have a job. So that's that's pretty risky. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Thank so, you yeah. for that. I, I, I have a friend who, when, when he was going through difficulty, this job loss and all stuff like that, they realized, so normally you would go to a place you shave for 300, 400 shillings. Mm. So they looked at, uh, then he has uh, some boys in the house. So when the, the husband shaves, then you have the boys shaving. That would total to like 1,500 That's sometimes. Good. Yeah. So he decided... This machine, if I go and buy it, it will cost me 2,000 shillings. Then if, um, if I sit down and demonstrate to my wife how to shave, it will cost me nothing. So they decided they're going to shave at home. And that reduced their expenditure exponentially. I know another one who said that uh, I like to go for facial, facial scrub. And facial scrub, they use uh, some items there, apricot and others. Uh, so they said, this apricot, we can actually use uh, some things at home. Ladies, you know those items? Sugar or honey or those other ones? And just do facial at home and life continues. Uh, so it's important to give us those tips. Yes. But thank you, we don't have time. Did you give you a parting shot? I think let me do it. All right. I think one thing that um, is certain in life is um, seasons are here and life is in seasons. So even when you get yourself into that situation, uh, just know that it's not permanent and that uh, God is a God of seasons. And one thing that you should learn uh, when you read from Psalms 37, 23, it says, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their life. So at time, a job loss may be a very hard time for you, but in God, it's a detail to something in the future. So trust in God. And uh, trust the process. He's faithful and in his own way, he makes his way and he's faithful. That's what I can say.